So today I want to show you uh, really quickly how I go through my daily comms training. I've got a little one pager that I wrote up that I'll be sharing with the Buy Me A Coffee folks and it just keeps me honest and it allows me to do multiple types of radio comms testing anywhere from short range to mid range to long range. So let's go ahead and pull out the schedule. I'm working on a field manual here and uh, while there's a lot of stuff in flight with the table of contents, this is the daily combo schedule. It's just a uh, basically three quarter page write up. All right, let's get started with APRS, checking mail and checking weather. All right, so starting up, we're going to do some digital. I've got the ICOM 10T here, and it's something I'm still evaluating. I've got an antenna pointed at the Phoenix area, so we're just going to drop that on the radio. We're going to go ahead and turn it on, and I've got all of the frequencies programmed for both voice and digital, and I just need to go ahead and switch over to the APRS frequency. Next up, we're going to take our DigiRig light cable and plug it in. Uh, the reason why I am playing with the 10T is because I do like the L-Type connector. Uh, it solves some problems that I'm currently having with both the VX6 and the FT60. I've done lots of videos on this integration, so this is basically just the Android phone. We'll use it both for APRS and also for email. All right, let's go ahead and open up our APRS Droid application. I've done a video on this integration before. We are going to start tracking. And the first thing I like to look for is to make sure that I'm actually being heard here. So I'm gonna clear the screen and um, hopefully we're gonna get some packets. Yeah, so we're getting some through. And the very first thing I like to do is check asynchronous messages for me. These are messages that other people have left for me. And the way that we're gonna do that is check a set of messages for mail. And I'm just gonna put in APRS. M and hit OK. And now we're sending out this packet and it's basically going to make its way into a DigiPeter in Phoenix onto the internet. Ask that gateway to service, hey, do you have any mail for KT7RUN? And there we go. We already got a message back right away. It's from my buddy Mike who's traveling. It says uh, kc 8 owl in Pittsburgh testing VX6 and MobiLink D. So he is all the way across the country and he has a very similar setup to what I'm doing here. So great way to establish comms with him. So I'm going to respond back to him and leave him an asynchronous message that he can check at his leisure. So we'll put the at symbol KC8OWL and I'll just put uh, Roger, be safe. I'll check in tomorrow and then we'll send that off and uh, packet can be a little bit flaky. There can be collisions. We're going to go ahead and wait for this to turn bright green and then we're going to go ahead and check some weather using the same application. All right, so it went bright green there, so I know that when he goes to do the exact same thing I did and use the APRSM uh, request that he'll be able to get that message. And it also looks like a couple of other messages came through from Friday, so shame on me for not checking in. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and check the local weather. Uh, there is a special uh, SSID called WXBOT, and all we have to do is craft a message to it. I'm just going to put my call sign in. It makes things really simple and it'll actually do a reverse lookup and return to me the local weather in my area from where I have my FCC license registered. I could also put in a zip code there and a few other options. I have made field cards for the Buy Me A Coffee folks on uh, some of the basics uh, so that you could have that as a reference. All right guys, so that took about three attempts, but uh, today is going to be mostly sunny, high of 105 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, we've got a net that's about to start in two minutes. So we're gonna to have to change the order and uh, jump down uh, just a bit. As part of my weekly schedule, we have a net on Tuesdays and Thursdays with our community emergency response team. I'm running the uh, Anytone 578 man pack. Good signal. KT7 RUN. Shaw Butte. KT7 RUN. Confirming Heidi. KK7 SXB. Gaston. KT7 RUN. And Donnie. W8 DSF. All three out of Shaw Butte. And all three sounding fantastic this morning. KT7 RUN. Any traffic for the net this morning? 
no traffic, back to net, KT7, RUN. So my favorite parts coming up, it's the situational awareness report, and this is stuff that's impacting myself and all the members in this group and area. So we're a bit behind schedule. Usually I would do Winlink after APRS. So all we're going to do is switch over to the Winlink frequency in my area. And this is on 145.710. We're still using the DigiRig Lite. And I've shown how to use the Winlink on Android application. And we're just going to go ahead here and go to sessions. We're going to go to my DigiRig Lite session. And we're going to go ahead and click run there. And we'll see if we can get connected up and it looks like we're already connected. We have an initial exchange going. All right, so that connection's done. We'll go to my inbox, and it actually looks like I have one message, and it looks like it's from my buddy Mike, KC8OWL, um, and he put, uh, Roger, Roger, message received, 73, Mike. So what basically happened here is I did a field exercise uh, this past weekend where I went out into the backcountry to find a water source called Rondo Springs, and at that time, I actually trafficked I'm in the field with the same setup. Uh, let's see if I could have it there. Yeah, I trafficked my coordinates in UTM and I was basically able to give him a quick sit rep. All right, so apologies for doing all of this a bit out of order. It doesn't matter too much because my buddy Mike is not actively sitting on the radio. Uh, typically, we would go to 40 meters voice and uh, basically do a 220 mile communication with zero infrastructure. Uh, taking advantage of something called Envis propagation. We'll also go ahead and switch over to this radio that we use for the CertNet and try the Intermountain Intertie, which is a linked repeater system. We'll try that one in a bit, but let's go ahead now and jump over to 40 meters. We're going to use a digital mode called JSA Call, and the first thing I like to do is check for messages. So I'll click on All Call and I will do a directed message, and I'm basically asking any of the operators on 40 meters if anybody has left me a message on their station. Very powerful, powerful stuff. So this will take about 15 seconds, and this is just straight HF communication, no repeaters. Uh, we can do short range, mid range, and long range, so I basically have the ability to do everything worldwide all the way down to my local community with the HF setup. And this is part of the reason why I really recommend people uh, get on HF because it's the most bang for your buck and the truest way of doing off-grid communication. Oh, and it actually looks like I have a message here uh, from a station I've never recognized, Kilo Foxtrot Zero, Oscar uh, Charlie Zulu. All right guys, so the way this is gonna work, we need to click on this station's call sign and pass in the message ID of 363. So we're gonna do right click, directed to, and we're gonna query for a message by ID, and then we're gonna enter in 363 and hit send. It's gonna take 30 seconds for this to go off. All right, guys, so we finally are getting a message back. It looks like 50 watts to do the trick. And again, this is gonna take a little bit of time depending on the message. And I've shown this before, but the nice thing about JSA is that they've got this store and forward messaging capability and it allows other people to send messages and store them for me on other people's stations, just like mine here for later retrieval. So I don't necessarily need to have my station up running 24 hours a day. All right, and this one is kind of garbled. There's some dots there. Uh, it says station up, loved. A couple things here. Uh, this is HF communication. I'll have to see the distance between myself and KF0CZ. But uh, you can see all of the little dots here means that it got garbled uh, over the air and uh, basically got a partial copy, station up, loved, dot, 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 from it this evening, dot, 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 URL, ETC, uh, see my, dot, 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 bounce messages. So I don't even know who it's from. Uh, what we can do, and I don't have time for it today, is we can always go and uh, basically do another directed message 
and we can do an again here and it, we're basically going to ask this other station to retransmit again. Now we can wait for later on today, maybe propagation conditions have improved, but either way we have this mechanism in general it works. Like I said, I've never worked with this station before, but uh, you know, that's how HF goes. So I typically do this at 6.30 a.m. We're going to transition over to the Intermountain Inner Tie System. And I've got a few different nodes here that I call Northlink 1, 2, and 3. 3 is actually in Prescott. It's a pretty good haul. And uh, we're going to go ahead here and key up KT7 RUN monitoring. Nothing heard. I'm going to QSY to Metrolink KT7 RUN. All right, guys, so I know that that was kind of a choppy video. Uh, it was actually more difficult to actually film what I normally do on a schedule and hit all of the windows, usually because I have everything lined up back to back. And my, more, my normal training partner isn't here, but we were able to basically do APRS uh, mail and also do uh, a WinLink exchange, which is a bonus. And we also got to listen in and sit in on that CERT net, which provided value to the community. The other things that I typically do a bit later in the day, mostly because I have to wait for propagation, is around 8.18 local time or 15.18 UTC. I'll listen to the WWV uh, broadcast. And the reason why I'm doing it 18 minutes after the hour is that they audibly transmit the HF uh, propagation radio blackout information, which I've shown before. So really good to have. I do that typically on 10 or 15 megahertz uh, because it tends to be open that time of day. And then at 10 a.m. local time, 1700 UTC, I'll actually also tune my radio to a WWV uh, AM broadcast and then use a tool called clock.exe to essentially set my clock based on the digital coded transmission because it's very important for a lot of the modes. So don't get too hung up on all the different modes I did. The point is, I believe, in practicing daily, establishing a community, and getting everybody else in your community, one, licensed if you're going to be using amateur radio. Uh, if you're using the business frequencies or MERS or FRS, that's a different story and uh, more open. Uh, but whatever the case is, whatever your mission dictates, whatever your communication goals are, I suggest that everybody put together a small schedule and get people in their group to get on board. And if nothing else, just get in the habit of tuning the radio and listening so you don't have to fiddle with your equipment. By doing this every day, number one, you guarantee that all of your equipment is in working order. You don't go more than a few days uh, if your equipment is not working and not knowing that that is in fact the case. So it's a really great way, just like anything else, the same way you would go to the gym three to five times per week. I consider getting on the air at least five times a week part of kind of my training to establish that muscle memory. And again, multiple different modes. Some of it is simplex communication, like my business frequency, so point to point. Some of it goes through a local repeater system, linked repeater system like the CertNet. Um, or the intermounted inner tie. I have a fallback to HF for short, mid, and long range communication using a digital mode like JSA. I also have HF voice capabilities, which I couldn't demonstrate this morning, but you guys have seen that on the channel a lot. So for the Bobby Coffee folks, thank you so much. I'm still trying to get this to be my full-time gig. Not quite there yet. I'm gonna push uh, until the end of the year and reevaluate uh, whether I can continue to do all of this. But bottom line is guys, Train hard, the time is now, things do not look good politically in my mind, and the more ownership you can take over your personal preparedness, I think it's absolutely gonna be in your favor and pay off dividends. Uh, have got a little bit of water from the, uh, from the run, so with that said, guys, actually, you can't toast with water. We're not gonna do that. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.